But these are yeah. from the world's largest ball of paints, and it's layers and layers and layers of this history of ball painting. Hi, I'm Dylan Thuris, co-founder of Atlas Obscura, and welcome to Show and Tell. This is a series we started during this time when we were all stuck at home and uh, thought maybe we would reach out to people who are stuck at home with interesting things and ask them to tell us about them. So today we're joined by Erica Nelson, who is this incredible visionary artist. She is an educator and she is the inventor of the world's largest collection of the world's smallest version of the world's largest things museum in Lucas, Kansas. So without further ado, Erica, uh, thank you for joining us here today. Hey Dylan, thanks for having me. I am at my home in Lucas, Kansas, the expo that um, houses, normally houses the collection is just a block and a half away. So the advantage of living in rural Kansas in a town of 400 is that I can walk to work and still use it as my studio space. But today I brought some of my models here um, and you can see by the background, I also live with a collection usually based on um, either roadside attractions or self-taught and outsider art um, makers. So I, I have to ask, uh, what is the world's largest collection of the world's smallest version of the world's largest things? Like what is what actually is that and how do they come about? So I travel the country seeking out anything with a superlative, any sort of world's largest. And it's usually a monument that says that about themselves, like the world's largest ball of twine or the world's largest prairie chicken. So one of the rules I set up for myself was that I have to actually go and see the thing, photograph it and gather its background story, find out who made it, why it was made, when it was made. And then I produce a world's smallest version of that world's largest thing. I usually have um, anywhere from 150 models upwards at one time. This was one of my first small things. So this is, <laughs> a tiny replica of a big badger found in Wisconsin. And this was one of the very first models that I made and ended up being an early postcard. But after three or four years, this is what <laughs> happens to those models. Oh, oh no. Yeah, and right. it's, it's fine one day, it's fine, it's fine and fine. And then the next day you see that the clay has burst through the skin of that little tiny model. Once a model is retired because it breaks, I often make another one unless um, the world's largest thing is no longer relevant. Because sometimes, on especially the rapidly changing ones, like the world's largest ball of rubber bands, the titles change so much that if I've not seen the current one, I sometimes retire that model completely. Let's do this from the point of view of your, your object. So let's start looking at some of the things uh, that you, you have uh, brought to share with us. In talking about the rubber the rubber band ball too, this is another one that, that didn't make it. So those were actual rubber bands. Um, let's see if I can get a better focus there. Um, I used dental rubber bands, so they were miniature rubber bands that I made while in the presence of the then current world's largest ball of rubber bands. Um, after this model exploded in the window, uh, because the rubber dries out, it's a really harsh environment. Um, I looked up to see if that was still the current rubber band ball, but that one had been um, defeated. So I have not made a new one to replace that. So that one is no longer on the table. I love that this is all based on places you have been because it's also a collection of your your life. Like it's a collection of your personal adventures and, and experiences. And that's, that's such a lovely thing to get to share it. Because otherwise you could just Google big things all day and make small versions. But it's dependent on road trips. So now that we've been stuck at home, um, I've been having to sort of change gears a little bit. So this yeah. last couple months, I've been catching up on some model making and doing little tiny videos of Kansas's world's largest. So for example, I have the world's smallest version of the world's largest wren from Topeka, Kansas. And then each of those models gets their own title card. Starting from Lucas, the giant travel plate, Abilene. These are so nice. 
Topeka. Oh, here we go. That's where the wren was Yay. from. Yay! That is delightful. So in searching out these world's largest, um, I always buy the souvenirs. So like Randy's Donuts has the, the mugs and the shirts. And there's a image of Randy, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. But I usually also collect um, other kinds of souvenirs. So anytime I go to Randy's, I ask them, I ask whoever's behind the counter <laughs> to give me a donut, most like the one on top. So I have a series of donuts that are sealed in these vitrines, um, which I haven't opened since they were sealed in. So this <laughs> one is from 2012. So there's a Randy's donut that that clerk decided was the closest to the Randy's donuts on top. And no one has laid eyes on this donut since 2012. Right. Yeah, I think the world needs mystery. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Time capsules, when they're opened, are so anticlimactic. They're gonna never measure up to old Rip, the toad that was found in one that was still alive. You can't match that wonder. So I like that sort of sense of holding something back. All of my uh, souvenirs that I take are non-invasive, but I do collect um, like chips of paint. So from a 2015 trip to Minnesota, there is a swatch of paint from Big Ole's Cape. Is they're usually laying there on the ground. Yeah. So anytime I'm seeing one, I'm always hunting around for little parts and pieces that also commemorate that experience. But again, non-invasively taken. I don't chip paint. One yeah. of my favorites is the world's largest ball of paint in um, Indiana. Visitors can sign up for a time and you paint the next layer and you get a certificate saying what layer you painted and what color it was. And you end up being a part of this record. But to keep it round, the owners started shaving off the bumps because when you paint things, there's always something that goes wrong or a drip. So to keep it round, they shave their ball. That can be taken wrong. Um, but they also have these wonderful souvenirs that are almost like Fordite, but these are yeah. from the world's largest ball of paint. And it's layers and layers and layers of this history of ball painting. It looks like one of those thin sliced rocks, you know, where you get this kind of beautiful uh, cross section of a, of a piece of geology. That's so nice. I test things out a lot. I, I see if things are true. I did have to go see the thing to see if it was the amazing thing, see what the buildup to the thing was and enjoy the glory of the thing. And then I'm sworn to secrecy. So you're just going to have to go see the thing to know what I'm talking about with the thing. I had somebody else with me who saw the thing who didn't think it was a thing and was very upset that I drug him through the thing to see the thing. But that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> there is something so incredibly fun and playful about all of, all of the work you do. By the simple act of telling a silly story or going through with a seemingly silly idea that actually is rooted in place and object. It frees people up to tell me their stories. I'm still wondering about the thing that you have to go through the thing to see the thing to know if the thing is the thing. Oh, uh, there are billboards. Oh, oh, the, oh, the thing. The thing, oh, you're talking yeah. about the thing. Yeah, the thing. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. What do you think the, the strangest thing you own is? The oddest one that I've made would also have been for the cow hairball. Cows lick themselves like cats do, but they can't hork it up. So in the slaughtering process, um, usually some sort of hairball comes out um, of one of the stomachs and they're tumbled around and around. So they're usually perfectly spherical. And I just love that, that object. It's a beautiful object about the size of a basketball and little tiny short cow hairs. Um, so then the model, I figured, needed to also be some sort of animal hair. So this is made out of cat hair. Um, that was cat hair from a short-haired cat that I could still roll and roll and roll and roll and roll until I got that duplicate of a cow hair ball. So that's probably the grossest model. I appreciate that you try to make the thing out of the same thing. Do you ever think about starting another museum? I have thought about doing the world's most average collection of the world's not so small versions of the world's second largest things. 
Are you familiar with the, um, I think it's called the Atomium, the giant atom that's in Brussels? It's like an enormous, and I was like, that might be the world's smallest collection of the world's largest version of the world's smallest thing. Thank you so much, Erica, for taking the time uh, to talk with me. I get so much uh, happiness out of these kinds of places and, and, and looking for those little stories. And so I really love all the work you do. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate um, how much Atlas Obscura has done to unearth these wonders because they really are all around you once you relearn how to look. And uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Do you have any, any anywhere people should go to look at for your work? Yeah, um, the titles that I was talking about, um, Kansas Collection of World's Largest Thing. It's a small snippet of videos that premiere every Wednesday on the World's Largest Things Facebook channel. Um, also on World's Largest Thing Instagram. And we do have a YouTube channel that features that We Wonder Road Trip for Kansas every Wednesday through June and July. Amazing. Well, thank you again. And everyone go watch the We Wonders. They are delightful. Thanks for watching Show and Tell. If you have suggestions for people we should consider uh, talking to in these videos, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoy watching these as much as we enjoy making them, please consider becoming an Atlas Obscura member. By joining the Atlas Obscura membership program, you are becoming a part of this incredible community of like-minded explorers. And you're supporting our mission to share wonder in the world. So consider becoming a member. And as always, also, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>